Today we're going to be talking about how you buy a house after filing for bankruptcy. This is also going to apply for foreclosures and short sales. We're going to be going through the exact steps you need to take and how to not get ripped off by lenders whenever it does come time for you to buy. So stay tuned. Okay, so the very first sub step that you want to take before you start following this process is you want to make sure that everything is discharged off your bankruptcy or that your foreclosure is finalized, your short sale is finalized, that nothing's going to come back and haunt you. The easiest way you can do this and verify is by going to freeannualcreditreport.com and downloading your complete full credit report from all three credit bureaus. This is going to make sure that nothing is reporting out uh, that's going to come back and haunt you down this process because you're about to spend a lot of time getting your credit scores up. First things first, you've got to get your credit straight. So step number one is going to be to increase your credit score as much as you can in the shortest amount of time as possible. And I'm going to go through every single step on how to do that. But here's first the exact reason why. So after you file bankruptcy or after you get a foreclosure or short sale, it's known as a huge ding or derogatory mark on your credit report. It typically lowers your points depending on your specific situation around two to three, maybe even 400 points. So it's a major hit. But luckily for you, now that your credit is in the tank after you file for bankruptcy, it's very easy to increase your score. Credit is very volatile and the lower your credit score is, the easier it is to bring it up. In in fact, the higher your credit score is, the slower it increases every single month. So step number one is to get a secured credit card from one of the vendors that I linked down below. And no, this is not an affiliate link. I'm not getting paid off any of this at all. These are just the known vendors that will most likely approve you the day after you get your discharge papers in hand so that you don't have to keep shopping around and applying for creditors that will continuously deny you and waste inquiries. So check out those in the, in the description down below. And just as a note, if you've had any discharge with any of the vendors that I'm listing throughout this video at all, then do not apply for them for at least the next seven years. You want to avoid them at all costs because they're most likely going to just automatically decline you since you just got discharged with them. And step number two in increasing your credit score is to be getting a secured loan. Now I made a complete video on this and a credit hack series that teaches you every way, shape or form in increasing your credit score. So I'm going to link it in the description or link it somewhere up here in the video so you can go check that out. But essentially a secured loan is you giving a bank or a credit union $1,000 and then giving you $1,000 in the shape of a loan so that you pay that back over the time period of one year in monthly installments. The reason this is so beneficial for you, especially leading up to being able to buy a house, is because unlike a credit card where it is a revolving line of credit, a credit loan gets reported out differently to the credit bureaus and it also is in the shape of a secured loan which is the exact same thing as a mortgage because a mortgage if you think about it is a secured loan with your house being the one that's secured. So it's going to look a lot better in the eyes of creditors and it's also going to be another active reporting trading line out to the credit bureaus to help you boost up your score every single month. And as a side note, the third tip that I'm going to give you to increase your credit score is that I want you to keep on all your revolving lines of credit your, uh, your balance is under 10% of the limit. So for example, if you also check out one of my other videos on your due date matters, which I'll also link in the description or up here in the video, you don't want to use over 10% of your limit. So for example, to break it down in simple terms, if you get a secured credit card approved and you put $300 down for that secured credit card, then you don't want to use more than $30. So go out and start using your credit to build your credit. For example, go to McDonald's, buy a strawberry milkshake for $3 and pay that back the exact same day so that it gets reported out to the credit bureaus as a zero balance but you're still using that card and it's still getting actively reported out as a positive good standing credit card. And then the fourth and final step to increasing your credit score in as little as one year is going to be applying for an unsecured credit card. So by this time, if you follow the steps correctly and to a T, you should have a secured credit card, you should have a secured loan, and now I want you to apply for an unsecured credit card from one of the vendors that I'm gonna list down below in the description as well, so check those out. When you apply for an unsecured credit card, you wanna make sure that you're applying for a bank that is more accepting on beginner credit credit users such as Capital One, Barclays, some of the lower tier credit cards. Don't go out and apply for like an American Express credit card because they're most likely going to deny you and we want to focus on increasing your score and not wasting your inquiries at all. And speaking of beginner credit, if you're new to this channel and learning or benefiting from this video in any way, shape or form, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that it can be ranked higher and help more people 
just like you and subscribe for more videos on credit, real estate, and investing because who knows, maybe we can teach each other something new one day. Step number two is to save as much money as possible and get your income reported out over the next two years as high as possible to the IRS. Now before we jump into this step, I want you to understand why I'm telling you that. Whenever you file for bankruptcy or whenever you have a foreclosure or a short sale as a derogatory mark on your credit history, most lenders are gonna have guidelines for you and timelines on when you can apply for certain types of loans. So the main types of loans that I'm gonna teach you about in this video are gonna be FHA, VA loans, for all the veterans out there and the conventional non-conforming loans. So to give you a breakdown of what an FHA and a VA loan is, those are government-backed loans set by the limits of the Federal Housing Finance Agency and following the guidelines of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mac, which you may have heard of before. Basically means in a nutshell that those are the loans that are gonna be helping out consumers with lower credit scores and lower down payments available. And then on the flip side of that, you have your conventional loans, which are most common upon consumers to have a higher credit score and also have less fees in them as well. And they're more commonly used by investors to buy rental properties. So to give you some guidelines so that you can figure out where you are in this process, if you're in chapter seven bankruptcy, if you've already had that discharge, you're gonna have to wait two years for an FHA or a VA loan, and you're gonna have to wait four years for a conventional loan. If you're in a chapter 13 bankruptcy, it gets a little bit different because you need to provide proof that you've been making payments back to your trustee and your trustee has to approve it as well. But if you can get both of those things approved, you only have to wait one year for an FHA and a VA loan. And it's only two years for a conventional loan following the exact same terms. And then as far as foreclosures and short sales go, they're a little bit longer, but let me explain it and break it down. Now for people in foreclosures and short sales, they're going to have to wait several years and even up to as high as seven years. Now on the flip side of that, you won't have to wait several years if your bankruptcy and your foreclosure are tied together. Now that was a little bit confusing to me when I was first doing research about that, so I dug a little bit deeper and it turns out that if your bankruptcy had discharged your mortgage whenever you filed for bankruptcy, then you only have to wait three years for an FHA and a VA loan. So by saving your income, you should be lined up to fit into one of those loans in the time periods that we just talked about following those guidelines. But for the next two years, you should try to increase your income to report out to the IRS as high as possible. So that means if you're self-employed, you should try to write off the least amount of things that you possibly can to show the highest amount of income. And same thing for W-2 workers, if you're working a normal job, try to get the highest amount of pay that you can for the next two years so that you can get approved for the highest amount of loan that you possibly can get. And the reason for that is, is because lenders typically will combine two years of your recent income history or more depending on your certain situation. And the third and final step is to get a really good loan officer. Whenever it comes time for you to get your first home after filing bankruptcy or your last foreclosure or short sale, you wanna make sure that you have someone that's gonna teach you and help you understand and really go through the whole process holding your hand so you don't just get screwed by another lender and have to pay too much for your loan because nobody should be overpaying for their mortgage. And if you've made it this far, the rest of this video is more about washing, rinsing, and repeating the exact same formula that I told you in step one so that you can increase your credit score as high as possible. Following many of the other videos that I've made on tips and tricks to increase your credit score as fast as possible in the least amount of time so that you can get the best possible financing for your next home. Now some obvious tips to avoid when choosing a lender is avoid any single uh, lender that you've had that has been discharged with your bankruptcy. And what I mean by that, if you had a Wells Fargo credit card that was discharged in your bankruptcy or a foreclosure under a Wells Fargo loan, try to stay away from that lender for the next several years. That way you don't get an automatic denial. And on top of that, you really wanna avoid going to banks in general. You wanna to go to a local lender that's gonna really work with you like I was talking about before to help you not only increase your credit score, and also when the time comes for you to start putting an offer on the home that you fell in love with, you wanna have a lender that's gonna be responsive, and banks typically don't open on the weekend, so you're gonna get a better response rate from the seller if you have a local lender that is well known in your area. And the final step of number three is gonna to be to not take no for an answer. If you followed all the steps in this video, your credit score should be at least between the range of 650 to 700 with that derogatory mark of bankruptcy, foreclosure, or short sale, or whatever it is on your credit history. 
This stuff really works. You can check out my other video that I break down the process more in detail on exactly what to do throughout that whole year process. Don't take no for an answer. You are going to get approved for your next home and you're on the right track to buying tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope I helped you in some way, shape or form and I'll catch you in the next video.